What's up everybody, Liam Klitschum here for another awesome Redshift tutorial. This week's tutorial comes in from Andre Fry. He emailed me asking to do a tutorial on hair and I realized I hadn't yet, so here it is. It's a really short video, it's pretty easy. If you know how to do hair in physical and standard renderer inside Cinema 4D, then you pretty much know how to take care of it inside of Redshift. So let's go ahead and jump in. So if you've ever worked with hair inside of Cinema 4D, it's really simple to get started. Just to tell you what the scene's got going on, I've got a dome light here, I've got a platonic and a floor. So if you want to add hair to anything, you just go to simulate hair objects, add hair, and like that magic, we've got hair in our scene. Now you can come over here and start tweaking it to whatever levels you want. Um, come in here with your guide. So right now we have 12, and that's to match the 12 vertices in here, and then 5,000 hairs, and over in here we have dynamics enable. I'm going to turn that off just for this tutorial, make sure we've got nothing else going on, and so that's pretty good just to start with. You'll see we've got this material here, and the scene's picking up the hair material. If I come in here, we've got some white specular, which is causing these whites in here, and then we've got this kind of black-brown range. And it's doing an okay job. Uh, to be a little bit more efficient and it reads it a little bit better, I recommend creating a redshift hair material. And if we put that right here on the hair, it'll update and you'll see nothing really happens. And that kind of throws people off a little bit. So let's go ahead and go on our shader graph and see what's happening. So in the shader graph, you'll see that everything in the hair is being driven by this C4D hair material here. So we can actually update everything right in here just like you would with standard or physical renderer. So if I want to have some kind of crazy purple or green hair, um, let's just color it right here. So I'm going to do like a purple base. Let me select the base, purple base there, and then maybe like some green tips here. And you can see there's some purple down there and it goes to green, but because of the specular, it's got this white into it. So maybe you'll add just a little bit of pink in there too for the specular and get some little bit of gradient pink in there. And um, what else can we do? It's just like working with normal hair in some authority. So um, maybe something with like the curve with thickness here. Let's see about kind of having it thin out a little bit. So you can see it kind of starts thick at the root and gets really thin. I think that's probably too thin, something like that. Maybe the root we can kind of have like five centimeters, like a really thick root. And then the tip, we'll, we'll probably leave that the same, maybe, maybe half a centimeter, something like that. And some stuff that I really like to play with is like frizz and kink and scale. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on frizz and you'll see it, it updates now that it's enabled maybe not so much maybe like 15 percent there but we can have a variation of maybe like 30 percent so uh, not so much overall but there's a lot of variety to it and maybe bring this down just a bit probably 65 percent and we can kink it up a little bit so it gets kind of kinked and clumpy and and all tangled in there i kind of like how that is at the moment and then what else can we do uh, we can start to add some density in there, and I think I'm going to just use a crazy noise map. How about something like, uh, we'll do electric, so it gets kind of fun in there. And maybe 200, oh, it doesn't let me go above. We'll do like 50% then, about halfway. So now it's starting to get kind of like bald spots in there, um, just from how the density is clamped with these black spots. So I might generate a little bit more hair, maybe something along the lines of like 25,000. There we go, nice and clumpy, kind of tangled. So I'm not really sold on how this is looking with the white. I'm gonna come back in, maybe add some green in there. And that gets to be a little too much. Maybe pull back the strength, something like that. 20% sharpness we can probably do like 20 as well and you can see everything that you want to do can be updated in here and if we come into our hair material and take a look there's really not much 
to do. So like the diffuse, you can have you can add some translucency to it if you want. See, it kind of lightens up in the back there to let some light through. Transmission, length of glossiness, the width of glossiness. Um, just some real minor things to update. So if you want to have your IOR of the hair be a little bit um, different than the the standard settings in here, then we can update that. So maybe like 1.45 instead. And samples, how about we go up to like 256 just to make sure they're nice and clean. And I think that's pretty much it. Even the samples up here, we can go up a little bit higher. And then if we do a bucket render, it's gonna render really fast. You can see it's already going around the scene. I've only got two cards in here at the moment, so it's just doing two buckets. So I'm gonna turn this back off. And what else can we do? Um, if you wanna throw dynamics on, it's just like working with it in standard or physical renderer. So hit enable, I'm gonna hit pause on this, and then if I hit play, you'll see those hairs fall down and re-enable this, and then everything gets activated again. All right, everybody, that's it for this week's tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me like Andre did. It really helps me drive content and tutorials for you guys. You can also leave a comment below. You can find me on social media. I'm at 531 pretty much everywhere. Or as I build this community, we do Redshift Live every Thursday. It's at 9 p.m. Eastern time. You can come in, hang out, ask questions, and watch me screw stuff up in Redshift watch me break down stuff and tell you how I built X, Y, and Z, or just kind of hang around and laugh as I make up stuff uh, on the spot. So anyway, again, you can find me anywhere on social media at 531. You can email me or leave comments below and it helps really drive the tutorials you guys want to see. All right, guys, thanks so much and I'll talk to you soon.